Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we're presenting with a case of George, our moray eel. Um, it was perfectly fine on the Saturday, but on the Sunday, he started presenting with neurological signs. So here you can see that he's swimming in a corkscrew pattern and this disoriented, it doesn't know which way is up and which way is down. And he also presented with labored breathing. And and he's always sitting out in the open. This is not his normal behavior. Uh, so we're gonna investigate what's the reason for this, uh, for George to present in this way. Okay, so from this video, you can see George is sort of tumbling around, sort of disoriented. There's quite a few possibilities that could have led to this um, condition. Uh, it could be a traumatic injury from a rock fall perhaps, or knocking his head. Um, it could be vitamin B deficiency because the owner was saying that they she normally thaws frozen food in water and that leads to leaching out of nutrients. Um, other possibilities is that maybe George should have swallowed a rock and she's trying to sort of remove that and it's a bit painful and x-ray should be able to diagnose that. Or possibly gas bubble disease. Um, if you notice um, in the tank before, you can see little tiny bubbles form. Uh, normally that's not a problem if the gas or the air intake is near the water outlet uh, but this one is actually coming in from the sump so if it's sucking in air from that far along the pipe um, you can get a, a, a situation where you get a super saturation of the of the water with gas and that can come out of the or be absorbed by the fish come out of the blood vessels or actually cause gas emboli in the blood vessels, um, blocking blood flow, uh, especially to the brain. And the other thing is that it possibly uh, his tank mate, who he's been tank mates with for about eight years, uh, has shown no problems, but we can see there's a little scar, uh, a little bit of an ulcer and a scratch. Possibly he could have had sustained envenomation by his lionfish tank mate. And while he was swimming in a disoriented fashion, he also sustained severe injuries to his nose and mouth, and this will also require treatment. So the treatment uh, protocol we're going to use painkillers, sedatives, anti-inflammatories and antihistamines, and as well as a B vitamin um, injection, which would also cover the possibility of nutritional deficiency. So the plan with this is to try and treat him symptomatically and as well as that we're just going to double check the water quality make sure that we can actually rule out any water quality issues uh, it's unlikely going to be the case but it's always good to be able to test them anyway we've done our routine water quality testing for a marine fish tank what we do is we test for ammonia nitrite nitrate ph and alkalinity and water temperature um, and everything seems to be within uh, range. The okay, last thing uh, we're going to test is the salinity of the water uh, for using my refractometer and it looks like it's about 36 parts per thousand with a specific gravity of about 1.028. Okay, so we're just adding the MS222 anesthetic. In marine water, you don't need to buffer it because there's enough buffer in the solution already. But if we're sedating a freshwater fish, uh, you'll have to add sodium bicarbonate, otherwise known as baking soda. Okay, okay so George looks very calm and sedated. He's upside down. Um, he's probably at surgical anesthesia stage, but a bit weary about handling him without uh, taking special precautions. I'm going to pop him back into the koi sock. Uh, we had him out of the koi sock so that we can observe him uh, better. Uh, if you're dealing with lionfish or stingrays, what I normally do is I have him in a net and then we'll approach him from below the net, so ventrally. So the treatment protocol is going to involve giving him five injections that will cover the three different possibilities that could have led him to this condition. Here we've located the point of the ulcer, uh, so we're going to give him an antibody injection here. We're using enrofloxacin at 5 milligrams per kilogram body weight. We've just located a little black spot so that in case there's any reaction to the um, injection, 
uh, it won't create any areas of discoloration. The next injection we're going to give is uh, the antihistamine. Um, this would cover the possibility of uh, envenomation by his um, tank mate Fluffy, the lionfish, and that should reduce any sort of reaction that he's having to the venom. The next injection we're going to give is diazepam. This is Valium. It's to give him some post-anesthetic sedative effect. And also as a side effect of this is it will also stimulate his appetite. So that will hopefully help him towards the road of recovery. And the next injection we're going to give is Flunixin. So in the case of envenomation by a lionfish or gas bubble disease, these are both very painful um, things to sustain. So the Flunixin anti-inflammatory is going to take care of that. And lastly, we're going to give vitamin B injection. So if in the case that it is due to a nutritional deficiency, as we remember, the owner thaws of the food in water in the fridge um, that can lead to leaching of nutrients. So this B vitamin injection is going to address that issue. So now I'm just going to put some topical antibiotics. So this is um, and rifloxacin mixed with some water. And I'm just going to put some powder gel just on his. So we have um, added some clean seawater uh, to dilute out the anesthetic. So he's sort of coming out of his anesthetic. Okay, so that's a peloxima gel. Or what we know as fish bandage, so that will uh, absorb the anrofloxacin um, antibiotic that we just sprayed there, and then that should have some residual effect. It will stay on the skin for some hours uh, while the injectable anesthetic uh, antibiotic, while the in injectable antibiotic um, is circulated through his system. Okay, so now we'll just put George back into his tank to recover. Uh, normally we have a separate recovery um, tank, but in this case, because uh, we don't have access to more seawater, uh, we're just going to do the recovery in his in back in his own tank. So we can observe his recovery better. We'll, we'll put him into this net so that if in case we need to take him out again to resuscitate, uh, it's it's easier to get him out. So now we've got George back in his tank. Um, we've got him in a sort of a semi comfortable position. I guess uh, it's hard because it's very long fish. Um, but we've got some extra oxygenation in there because marine or seawater doesn't hold as much oxygen. So it's very important whenever you're sedating or anesthetizing marine fish to actually have aeration occurring. Um, so we'll just wait for him to recover, which will take about 10, 15 minutes. And hopefully he'll respond to our treatment within the next couple of days. Okay, we're just uh, gonna return him to his home and um, moving him away from the net somewhere more comfortable. Yeah, okay. Okay, so George has woken up from his anesthetic uneventfully which is really good because there sometimes you can get through the excitation phase uh, either when they're going in or coming out uh, so um, yeah he just had a very smooth recovery he has regained his posture or his um, balance so you can see he's no longer upside down as he was before when he was inside that anesthetic tub and you can see that um, his eyes are they following us? Not really. Yep, so he's, he's moving his eyes around. Little, little twitches so you can see that he's 
um, conscious now. His breathing is still quite labored, uh, but we're hoping that the, the whole, I guess, concoction or the whole medicine, <laughs> what is the word I'm trying to look for? Uh, yeah, the whole, the whole treatment protocol uh, will uh, give its effect within the next few hours. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, share and subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week. Put the tip down into the water. Oh, 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 oh. Get away from the line fish. Put the whole net into the water. Make it a inviting tube that he might want to swim into. So I just need that in the water. So it looks like it's okay. And then that net is sort of great. Right.